because I think legitimately this is one of the most um this is the one of the most um important and funny things I've ever kind of discovered about Brendan in the last few years I think is really quite funny and really quite unbelievable because what it demonstrates is that despite what we might think about this guy's stand-up and despite what we might think especially me myself and others former fans of the actual podcast and we might think that the show's not funny anymore we might think him and brian brian aren't really as close as they once were the chemistry isn't there and it's essentially dying a very slow death aka death by a thousand cuts big up tony hinchcliffe right most of us feel that way but i've always said that i think the reason why brendan's able to legitimately keep doing what he's doing in the face of everybody saying he sucks and thinks he's horrible at comedy is that deep down in his soul he legitimately thinks he's hilarious like he makes himself laugh like legit so that kind of tapping you know that mike tap on the leg thing that he kind of found at, from flipping dave Chappelle that he's been copying i think even if he didn't find it from dave Chappelle, he would have started doing it eventually because he makes himself laugh and there's no other better example of how much brendan thinks he's funny than clips of him on the podcast watching clips of him doing other stuff so in this particular clip from the fire and the kid recent episode episode number 885 they start off the show opening talking about the recent fight companion for ufc 287 where they had um sam tripoli and um chito vera and brian calendar and brian brendan just segues into it and starts to bring up how funny that show was and how much he was laughing at something that he said and did and then they go on his instagram and play a clip and brendan is legitimately smiling from ear to ear laughing and giggling at himself on the screen no sense of embarrassment no sense of satire whatever he's legitimately creasing up at the idea of him on the screen making jokey jokes it's kind of fascinating and it kind of gives you an indication as to where he kind of views himself and what he kind of thinks is legitimately funny it's quite crazy to see so let's kind of play this and see what he says but i legitimately thought this was hilarious to see him absolutely crying at the you know sight of himself making the joke on the podcast that he did the other day Already, I, I forgot you wrestled in high school, dude. We just already, dust off that, the old yeah. singlet, wrist control. I know how to relax. I get you. I take your back. I can crab ride. I dude, do a lot I, of shit. That fight I'm companion, heavy. that fight, the Cowboys fight companion. I was yeah. laughing so hard. Driving home, I was laughing at Sam this morning. I woke up laughing at Sam. I like Izzy's tattoos. It's just we're just all <laughs> having fun. Loves. We're just I all having how fun. To and then we're dead like, serious. Dead serious. He goes, God, I love Izzy's tattoos. And then it's. 30 seconds of silence, which is usually frowned upon on a well, podcast. You just went, you went, and I just go, silence. Silence. <laughs> yeah. I have the clip, Jim. Do you have the clip? Yeah. It's so fucking funny. It's very funny. Because it, the, the, what makes it funny is Sam is so sincere. It's just well, like, no, Sam is also oh. Say that again. It, the, the, what makes it funny is Sam is so sincere. <laughs> sincere. <laughs> Because the, the, what makes it funny is Sam is so sincere. <laughs> how did this guy graduate? Like, how did he, how does he have two degrees? Legit. It's a school system in America that messed up. Like, if you play sports, can you just, like, get away with just not turning up to class? <laughs> if you happen to be good at sports <laughs> when you're in high school, like, what is going on here in college? Like, what is, what is that? It's just well, like... like Sam is because the, the, what makes it funny is Sam is so sincere. He's just like, you now, mate. Sam is also. Oh, I love those tattoos. Sam's, yeah. Sam's a high level. <laughs> <laughs> I legit think in the whole time I've done these streams, I think I've done, I'm close to 100 already, right? Of these flipping random show streams. Big up everybody for tuning in. I don't think there's been one time where I've legitimately contemplated playing a clip of myself talking ever. It's so embarrassing. It's so cringe. I would never do that. It's already bad enough I had to listen to myself to make clips that I have to flip and upload onto your channel. It's flipping brutal to go through them. Really is to hear myself speak and hear my flipping dumb, annoying voice. I can't imagine sitting on the podcast and legitimately laughing this hard at the sound of my own voice. Like he's actually laughing. Like he legitimately thinks this is high entertainment. Crazy shit. Just dead silence. Yeah, Sam's the best, man. I think if I fought in the UFC, I'd have to suck down at 115, and that's what's annoying to me. 
115 fight females, yes. Yeah, that's what annoys me because I'm looking at Cheeto and I'm like, it's, it's See, this is what I'm talking about. What about um, what about Slap Fight League? Slap Fight League, I don't I, have I feel the, like we uh, can get you a deal with No, I don't have the uh, face for it. Place well, let's fix my hair there. But anyway, <laughs> Dude, um, I love he's... Izzy's tattoos. They're so awesome. Look at everyone. <laughs> Silent. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know how to respond. Comedians. <laughs> just comedians. Just everywhere. Comedians. <laughs> look how he's laugh. Look how he's smiling. Have you ever seen anyone? Have you ever seen Brendan smile at anything in life the way he's smiling there? Not even when he's talking about his kids that he smiled this way or his wife. He sees himself on camera. Right, he sees himself on camera. Oh my god, who's that? Man, he's so funny. Who's your friend? What's his name? Brenda. Brandon. Bob what? Bobby Lee. Oh, he's cute. He's so funny. Like, that's legitimately what he's doing. Hey, hey, man. Man. I felt real sincere. How about Cheeto, uh, like, hanging with all of us with no problem? <laughs> I couldn't see that. <laughs> that felt like the gayest. Excuse me, Brian? A UFC fighter is hanging you, you guys without a problem. Who are you guys? Are you fucking still team fucking six? He's hanging with us. A flipping UFC fighter's hanging with us. Excuse me? No, we have to go back to that. What? How about he's ha like what? Because he's a civilian. Comedians. <laughs> Just comedians. Just everywhere. Comedians. How about Cheeto like hanging with all of us with no problem? I couldn't see. Oh, shut up, you cuck. Anyway, yeah, that felt him. like the gayest yeah. thing in the show. I didn't know what to I've never seen Brendan laugh or smile this way in my entire life. I swear to God, he's legitimately bending at the thought of himself. Just looking at himself is like, right? Like, look. Have you ever seen him smile this way? That's actually his real smile. That's not him copying Joe Rogan's smile or smiling just to kind of fake the funk. That's legitimately, wow, man. I'm so funny. I'm hilarious. I'm, I'm gorgeous. I'm too sexy for this pod. Too sexy for this mic. Too sexy for this... <laughs> like, what? Without, right. without sounding racist, I had nothing. I was all, yeah, they're cool. I was like, I can't, I can't see him. He had like a big Goodrow head on his back. <laughs> Look how hard Sam's laughing. That's the hardest I've ever seen Sam laugh. There it is. Very, very, uh. <laughs> also, please tell me. Please tell me, anybody in the flipping stream chat, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm actually somebody that's not ashamed and not afraid to say that I consume a lot of content. I put out a lot of content and I consume a lot of it. I think that's my sort of like, um, that's my way to sort of um, add balance back to life in general, right? I, I, consume, I put out a lot of content. I waste a lot of people's time. So I also consume the stuff that they put out. How many times or how many shows have you ever listened to in your entire, especially comedy-based podcasts, where the podcast host will play a clip of themselves from a previous show? Is that a thing that happens? I legitimately can't think of another Honestly, I can't think of another show where I've seen them sit down and pull up clips. Yo, big up Space Guy. Appreciate you, brother. 699. Congrats on almost 100 random shows and hours of great entertainment. You know, while going big up, big up. Thank you, Space Guy, for being there as well. You're an OG for hanging in there. I appreciate you, brother. 100 soon come. Big celebration soon come. But yeah, have you ever seen any other show in the comedy space that has them pull up clips of themselves? from another show and laugh at it like this maybe it's a reference but i've never seen him laugh at this in this way this is legitimately the height of comedy for the both of them this is pretty nuts brian <laughs> changes up <laughs> brian just missing the boat here <laughs> oh it came from yeah, sam's well, soul yeah, yeah me and cheetah were like back in the fight you guys were dying <laughs> by the way look at Bear's leg a little red <laughs> Yeah, the reason why Chio fits in so well is because he's he's not trying to uh one up guys. You know, he knows there's uh symphony there and he's not trying to jump wow. in with the fucking trombone. He's great. That's why he's great. That and he's funny himself. He's smart, fucking great. funny, special. Love Cheeto. Hold on, that's a weird compliment to give somebody. 
he's not trying to one up coming from the person who one ups tries to one up everybody and he knows there's a what there's a synergy so what he's playing his position he's like a yeah. civilian is that what he's, he's basically trying to say yeah you said uh i feel you like that guess what anyway regardless that was absolutely horrendous it gave me chills these guys legitimately think they're funny. And again, this this is for all you guys who think, oh, how come he's so delusional? Why does he think he's better than what he is? He's terrible. Doesn't he watch himself? Yeah, he does. He watches himself all the time. And he cracks up laughing. He makes himself cry. <laughs> That's how funny he thinks he is. So if you're in any confusion or any doubt as to why he is the way he is, there you go. You're welcome. You're bloody welcome. Okay? That's it. You're bloody welcome. Anyway, next on the list here, we have this clip, courtesy again from the Fire Kids subreddit. This is courtesy of a user called I Downvote Cake Days. I underscore downvote underscore cake days. And this is um, a clip about Brian basically going to Austin to hang out with Joe Rogan, which is weird, right? He's hanging out with Joe. <clears throat> And he's obviously, and suppose, okay, actually, let me try to get a clip from here. Let's see if I can get it from the transcript. He's going to be hanging out with Joe and he's going to be um, t having a tour of the comedy mothership. Does that sound weird? He's a close friend of Joe's. But instead of going there to hang out, he's just going to go there to flip in, have a tour of the flipping mothership itself. What do you guys think that's? What do you think that's about? Would you be upset about that? It kind of sounds like that, that Legion of Skank story that Big J Augustin shared where they went to um, Joe's studio in LA before he moved to Austin and they went to hang out um, to do the show, obviously. And then just before they did the show, Joe showed them around his flipping compound and the flipping, you know, he had his bow and arrow and all this sort of fun stuff he had. And he just kept showing them stuff, but he wouldn't let him touch or play with it. <laughs> right? It sounded like something definitely Rogan would do. He's the kind of guy back in the day when I used to have, when we used to, when in my generation, we used to play video games, there was no real online play. So you'd have to take your controller to your friend's house to go and play. And some people wouldn't have many controllers or they would only have one and you'd kind of just pass them around and, you know, play that way. But there's also some freaks, some weirdos, some psychos who would invite you to come around so you could just watch them. You weren't allowed to play. You just have to sit next to them and encourage them, react. I don't know, maybe go and get them some snacks or something if you're a real cuck. Joe seems like that kind of dude, that kind of kid who would invite people around to his house, not let them play the Sega Mega Drive, and he had to sit there and watch because he only had one controller. <laughs> but anyway, this is um, this is Callan talking about going to the mothership. Let me see if I can pull it up now. It's available, I think, on yeah, episode number eight eight five. So I won't need to use the clip from the TFK sub. But let's go from about here. I think this kind of explains it. Let's go from about here. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Let's go here. Uh, let's get it on the screen. Boom. And two free pillows for the listeners of Fire and the Kid. Go to helixsleep. Hold on. Before we go there, did he say pillows instead of saying pillows? No way did he say that. All mattress orders and two free pillows for the. Pillows? What the fuck is a pillow? Easy. Helix is offering you guys up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. For is there something wrong with his tongue? Does he have like a fat tongue or something? Or some sort of condition? Pillows? Or is that an accent? Do people from Colorado speak like that? Do they pronounce pe pillows pillows? God almighty. Anyway. For the listeners of Fire and the Kid, go to helixsleep.com slash fighter. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah. Uh, anyway, your head's off. Did he also say good night, sweet prince or prince? Prince. Did you hear that? Oh, good night, sweet prince. Okay, prince. I forget yeah. prince. Okay. Uh, anyway, your head's to Austin, buddy. Heading to Austin. I'll see Mr. Rogan there. Did that look away? Was that him being shy and being kind of coy? Because he knows Brendan wants to go to Austin real bad, but Bre Joe is kind of like, you know, keeping him at arm's length. That little look to anyway, the side. Your head to Austin. He's kind of embarrassed. Like, yeah, I'm going. I know. Austin, buddy. Heading to Austin. I'll see Mr. Rogan there. He's going to take me on a little tour of the mothership. Oh. You're not performing, though? 
Maybe I Maybe will. Maybe you jump on. I don't know. That'd be good. I'll talk to Adam Egan about it. Maybe I will. But then you're just there. You, but you're not doing stand up. You're doing a no, TED Talk a, thing. I'm doing the Minds Fest, where I'm I'm going to be doing a podcast with <laughs> Destiny. Yep, and uh, I think Tim Pool. I love it. I actually really do enjoy how anti intellectual this man is, and how turned off he gets by people who, you know, want to discuss things further want to go deeper into topics, want to have intellectual conversations and just talk about more things than digs, how many chicks you fucked and whatever else random woman fucked a dog or something. Anything more than that will stress his brain. But I like the fact that he kind of owns up to it, that his brain cannot process much more, cannot process anything serious. Reality TV, crappy TV, um, you know, dogs fucking cats or something or whatever it may be. How many chigs some guy fucked? Who's beast in this and that? And pre- risk pronouncing fighters, you know, names. But when it comes to having serious discussions about serious topics or just trying to look and sound and act smart, you force asleep. I absolutely love it. But let's go back to what Brian said. This is legitimately one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life because the way these guys kind of pussyfoot and kind of get nervous around Rogan is hilarious. And I also love how Rogan's already kind of set boundaries and he's already kind of siphoned off the blame to other people. So this Adam Eager guy, he's really funny also because he used to do this podcast with Mark Norman. He was kind of his right-hand man and he was really funny. They were close friends. And he also used to do the booking for the comedy store. Legit dude knows his shit. So Rogan stole him from the comedy store told him come over here i'll double your salary i'll give you a house come over here and hang out and he's been obviously helping rogan build up um the roster over there the comedy membership but we know who's really in charge right obviously adam eager's there running a show day to day he's probably the probably the gm and whatnot but we know rogan still has an influence because rogan's rogan right he's not going to just like siphon up to somebody and just kind of be hands off he's definitely going to be you know in there and trying to get involved in running the show and making sure he's part of the decision making process but he's smart enough to have told these flipping you know um clout chasing leeches these guys who kind of just use him for his fame and his notoriety and don't want to be friends and whatnot right he's already told them hey adam eager handles the booking not me so he's already kind of fed that lie out there that it's adam eager (laughs) did the booking and not him so they should just leave him alone and he's even done it to his best friend, his friend of like more than 20 plus years. The guy who he kind of, you know, came up with in comedy. He's already gave him that lie. I flipping love it. Rogan's a legend. Rogan is always going to get props for me, man. Navigating that flipping cesspool of people. And the fact that, like I said previously, I legitimately think if any of these guys were had the same level of power, influence and fame that Rogan had, they would legitimately be Genghis Khan in comedy form. They would be tyrants, absolute tyrants. But Rogan at least is somewhat cool. Now, good night, sweet friends. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you're headed to Austin, buddy? Heading to Austin. I'll see Mr. Rogan there. He's going to take me on a little tour of the mothership. He's taking him on a tour. He hasn't said he's going to play because maybe they've got no rapist rule or something in Austin, Texas, some sort of law that came into place after the famous case of Stevenson v. Stevenson's or whatever. Something happened. Maybe. Who knows? They might have to announce him as a special guest and he jumps on there in a mask or something and scares all the hose away. I don't know. But that's hilarious. He's going to give him a tour of the club he opened. <laughs> Rick's going to be like, anyway, I've got to go. <laughs> Oh, you're not performing though? Maybe I Maybe will. Maybe jump on. I don't know. That'd be good. Uh, Talk to Adam Eager about it. Maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Eager now is going to be the guy everyone's going to be pestering. I've got a feeling. My This is just my theory. I've got a feeling. Brendan's been talking kind of spicy about Rogan lately. He's been a little bit more loose with throwing out a couple of subs here and there. You know, um, I'm an expert in marketing. That comment he made about, you know, um, he doesn't take advice from marketing from Brent, from Joe Rogan in certain ways. He's just been a little bit more open to kind of, you know, teasing and saying some things about Rogan kind of in a semi-disparaging way. My theory is that he sometime recently reached out to Rogan about playing at a comedy mothership. And it's probably the first time he's actually done something like that. I think other times it's been a natural kind of, hey, you should come on a show, come promote your special, blah, blah, blah. But I think in recent times, he started to ask Rogan for things. And now the relationship has changed because I feel like with Rogan, with being how popular is, I think someone just famous in general, 
you probably relationships with people do change the moment they ask you for money or the moment they kind of ask you to come on a podcast or the moment they ask you directly to play at, the, at your comedy club then you start to get a bit weirded out by them and you don't want to be friends with them anymore because you're realizing they only see you as an opportunity to get on stage and make money and shit so he probably asked him directly hey rogan can i play at the comedy mothership and he said dude you're not funny i don't like your comedy you're not good no way i think that happened recently it's my theory i think that happened recently joe said flout no you're not funny enough and the reason why i think that is i'm going by what bgl said bgl said in one of his many interviews he did post um his breakup with brendan that joe told him that he maybe heard from brendan i don't know how you heard it but bgl said that joe's been telling brendan to chill out with the comedy clips and stop posting clips of him doing comedy Number one, because I think in general, a lot of these older comic guys don't really like putting out clips of themselves doing special, doing, doing material. I think a lot of them will prefer you come to their shows to see them do material. And also a lot of them think that all these clips, the trend of the clips that maybe Schultz kind of, pro, you know, um, um, spearheaded is kind of ruining a lot of these guys because the stuff isn't good. It's kind of giving a weird condensed version of their bits and stuff, you know, removing the ums and the ahs and the pauses that kind of add to the joke, blah, blah, blah. But they're not really fans of it. But I've but BGL said at the time, Rogan's telling Brendan to stop with those clips because they're not doing him any favors because they're not good enough. They're not funny that he should focus on tightening up the jokes and then put out the clips on the jokes already. But Brendan, in the, you know, he wants to kind of have content out there, you know, make sure that he gets clicks and views to kind of help his bottom line. And he keeps pushing the clips. So I think those that comment that BGL said, coupled up with the way that Brendan's been acting and talking about Joe Rogan a bit frosty. I've got a feeling, me personally, I don't know anything. I've got no insights that Joe they've told Brendan he can't play at the comedy club anytime soon because he's not he's not funny enough and i bet i guess he made out a rule when he opened it like you know i know these comics i'm friendly with everybody but i'm gonna make sure no shit comics come on my stage that's my theory what do you guys think and you're just there you but you're not doing stand-up you're doing a no, TED doing Talk a, thing? i'm doing a minds fest where i'm, I'm gonna be <laughs> doing a podcast with destiny <laughs> yep and uh i think tim pool <laughs> i know and and uh, and we're going to be talking about the Twitter files. Oh, dude, you're it's exactly why we're it's talking about It's going to be a debate that. about the Twitter files. <laughs> it's interesting that they would even get someone like him on the show anyway, because he doesn't read any of that stuff. Brian's essentially a kind of a a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of a couple more IQ points above flipping Brendan. He doesn't really read stuff. He just read headlines. Do you remember back in the day? Again, I was an OG fan. Do you remember when um? Brian used to do those that that part of the show. What was it called again? Brian had a part of the show on the T5K at the end. Is it called Making Sense or something? What did he say? It was a, it was a section at the end of the show where Brian got to basically talk about a topic that he saw on the net that he thought was interesting, something that was maybe scientific, political, whatever it may be, culture war type of stuff. Was it making? I don't know what it was called. It was something, but essentially all he had to do was read up a couple of articles and get a little bit, you know, knowledge, knowledgeable on what he was talking about and then present at the end of the podcast. He wouldn't even read it. He wouldn't even read articles before he kind of presented them on the pod. So he'd read the headline, then read the article and realize it wasn't what he was thought it was. And then it would kind of fumble it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so Brian isn't really the high, yeah, that's it, dropping knowledge. That's the one, that's the one. Seth remembers dropping knowledge. When Brian used to do dropping more knowledge, he used to always get his shit wrong. It'll be the wrong article. It'd not have the right conclusion to match what he said earlier. So the fact that he gets on these, pro, you know, these platforms to have debates with Destiny and stuff about Twitter files, Matt Taibbi, Elon Musk, all this sort of stuff, Joe Biden, you know, the flipping Hunter Biden, flipping dick pics and stuff is insane because he doesn't read anything. He just kind of sees headlines and maybe sees clips online and that's it. So it goes to show you, if you've got a little bit of celebrity and a little bit of steam behind you, people will have you on stage talking about stuff that you have no business talking about just because you're famous and you can, you may or may not be able to sell some tickets or tickets, as Brendan would say. Absolutely insane, absolutely redacted, but I love it. Everybody's getting invited to the comedy mothership, but Brendan, um, Brian's going to have a tour there. Br Br Joe's going to show him all the cool things in there. Mitzi's bar, everyone's hanging out, having a good time, but he's not going to perform. He's gonna be. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna give him a seat to sit at the front to watch him perform stand up. But he's not gonna let him get on stage. <laughs> it's gonna be so funny. I can't wait to see that.